Hey everybody, it's Cindy, and today I have a quick tip video for you. Hopefully it will be a quick tip Tuesday. I'll get uploaded tonight before I go to bed. Otherwise it'll be a quick tip Wednesday, which doesn't sound as good. But this is my product that I want to show you. I don't know how I missed this before, but I did. I usually know what Tim Holtz and Tonic have coming out because they're some of my favorite tools. Um, but I missed it, and it is called the Mini Rotary Deluxe. No, Mini Rotary Cutter. It's by Tim Holtz. It looks like this in the package. I think it was 5 or $6. It was relatively inexpensive. And aside from the little black cord here, because I put that on, it looks like this. Doesn't look like much. I would have passed it by, except that I had never seen one before, and I had Tim's name on it, and said Tonic, and I love their tools. So I stopped and looked, and I was really glad I did, because basically it opens up. There we go. It opens up, and there's a teeny tiny, I don't know if you can see it or not. Maybe if I get it under the camera right. Um, teeny tiny blade on it. Super sharp. Don't touch it. It is very sharp. It's a rotary cutter, but it's a handheld one, which I've not seen one that's quite this simple. I have one that I use for quilting that's um, a little bigger and a little bulkier. Works great for fabric, but it's a little bulky for, for paper or just a single cut. So I was really excited to try this. I wasn't expecting a whole lot, but I was really thrilled with the results. So. I'm going to use this mostly for scrapbooking, so if I have two sheets of pattern paper and I know I'm going to layer them with the one of the pieces as the border, like that, and then one of the pieces on top, if you have just a quarter of an inch off of each side all the way around, you basically have 11 inches inside that you're getting rid of or that you're going to cover up. Now on some paper, this is pretty flimsy paper, so I'd probably be okay with that, but a lot of the times you have really heavy cardstock or a really heavy pattern paper that's got some bulk to it. You don't need that back. So you could, um, I'll probably do it this way because I don't want to waste this sheet. You could, if it's a heavy enough weight paper, you could cut the inside out of this and maintain the frame and then be able to use that inside square that you cut out either with another project or as a photo mat or something. So it's a good way to save paper and I'm all about saving paper, especially pattern paper that I really like. Um, so the problem with doing this is you either have to use scissors or a craft knife, which is okay, and a ruler, it's not a big deal, but it takes a while or you can try to use your trimmer and that takes even longer because trying to get the measurements right I always end up cutting it wrong so I'm always looking for a better way to do things that for some reason I don't feel are quite right the way I'm doing them so this was the answer to this so I'm going to I'm going to want to leave that quarter inch border all the way around but actually I want to leave quite a bit more because I just want to cut the middle out of this sheet so that it can act as a, a frame to this sheet once I cut this down to 11 by 11. And this is not actually going to be a layout. I'm not going to use these colors together because they're not the same tone at all, but um, this is just an example. So this is some basic gray paper. It came in one of their collection packs. Um, best of basic gray too. And I'm going to cut a big square out of the middle of this. And it's super simple using this way easier than a craft knife. I don't know why it works so much better for me, but it does. And I'm just going to pick a spot with a ruler and basically guess. It doesn't have to be straight, doesn't have to be perfect. And there's another spot I'm going to go ahead and roll it right down there. And lay this down. You could take time to measure this. I just want the chunk out of the middle so I can use it for something else and I want that frame so it's nothing like even actually but I'm okay with that okay so that should take care of most of it and if you have a few little places left you can just either um, use 
use this again, or you can just snip out those little tiny corners, just like. And then you have this piece, which, although it's not anything like even, would make a great frame. And you're not wasting this extra chunk. But you'll have this, this ready to trim this down to a smaller size that'll fit inside the frame. And then, of course, you'd have this on the background, which um, shows you the size of the frame better. See, it's nothing like even, but I'm okay with that. Or you could turn it over this way. Actually, I like that better. Weird. Anyway, it's still the same frame. Turn this down. You've got the frame. You didn't lose that middle piece. You're not wasting paper. And this makes it really, really easy to do that. I'm sure I'll find another 100 uses for this. Uh, but this was the one I found when I've been playing with it for like 5 or 10 minutes. I apologize for the dog noise in the background there. Um, I played with it for just a few minutes tonight. And realized right away that I was going to use it a lot for this use because it's simple and, and unlike craft knives if I forget to, to put the cover back on I won't hurt myself with this one and I just strung up a piece of cord right through that end they have a little hole so you can hang it and I'm just gonna leave it hanging on my desk really simple and it's a really great product so that's my quick tip for today I hope I haven't talked too long uh, if you like this video or found it helpful or have any questions, please leave them below. Give me a big thumbs up if you enjoyed it. And watch So Stinking Crafty for videos in the next couple of weeks. Have a great night.